It's difficult to define the civil rights movement of our day as, as one thing. If we're talking about the classic civil rights movement of the 1950s and the 1960s, which was a very different time in terms of how people communicated and um, how information was shared, well, there you had kind of a, a centralized leadership uh, with uh, Dr. King being a, a representative head and a collection of organizations that that cooperated and played their part, the NAACP, the um, the Southern Christian uh, organizations and uh, the student um, the student movements, uh, SNCC and CORE and all these organizations working together, uh, really aiming at a fairly particular um, set of set of laws and policies around the right to vote and integration and so on. And those those policy issues were really quite powerful symbols themselves for what was being sought after at bottom, freedom. Well, that, that seems really clear in the lens of history. If you sort of ask what's the civil rights issue of our day, I think you get a lot of answers to that. I think you could get a uh, continuing conversation about um, sort of justice in education, right? People forget that one of the landmark issues in the classic civil rights uh, movement was indeed integration and education. So Brown versus Board, uh, 1954. That, that's that's all about education policy. Um, and and today we still have educational issues that are civil rights issues. Um, many people will will not recall that Dr. King spoke a great deal about police brutality. Now, police community interactions in the 1950s and 60s are not the same as they are today, and we need to recognize the progress, the wonderful progress and grace that God has shown the country in that regard. But the conversation today about over-incarceration or mass incarceration, about uh, sentencing reform, about the training and the, and the reformation of, of police practice, that, that, that has its roots in that, in that sort of old sort of struggle of the classic civil rights movement and, and longer. So uh, one could put that on the table as a civil rights issue. We still face threats to Voting Rights Act and a renewal of the Voting Rights Act. And so even the enfranchisement uh, is an issue that lives with us today. And so I, I think today civil rights uh, really has a, a, is a wider set of issues than perhaps we think of if we're thinking of the classic civil rights movement. Unlike the classic civil rights movement, there's no centralized leadership to it. So the democratization of information through the Internet and through social media uh, has, has created a rapid pace, unlike the, the, the 50s and 60s, and has allowed for the, uh, the sort of rising up of leadership in a much more diffuse way. And so it's hard to kind of put your finger on one thing and say, this is the issue and this is the leadership. What you have are a lot of voices on a lot of issues that uh, in many respects belong to the civil rights conversation. That makes it harder for us to be discerning. So as Christians, we're looking at all of this diversity and, and we're seeing a movement that is no longer sort of moored in the church and in the Christian tradition, but is, is largely secular today in its, in its uh, leadership and, and its values. And so the Christian, Hebrews 5.14, has to exercise discernment and to grow in discernment and to think through the issues more carefully and prayerfully and to be more strategic about their alliances uh, when it comes to working on these various issues. Uh, so it's a brave new world. And uh, in many respects, it's a, it's a much better world. Um, but it's also a time for Christians to be not only involved, but discerning in their involvement. So the name of Christ might be made great, and the cause of Christ might be advanced, and the grace of God might fall upon our neighbors.